if you're in the kind of mood where you need to take out a little of your frustration on something hard with a big blunt object, this is the day for you because it's tile breaking day. And that's because it's mosaic shelf building day. Na -na. Look how pretty. This is a little shelf that you put in the, on the garden wall and set plants on it or whatever. Such detail. And then it's all grouted at the end to make, um, to make it all smooth. Now, the tile breaking part, though, totally rocks, OK? There's a bunch of ways to do it. You can do it the controlled way, or you can do it the wild vixen way, which is sort of what I was into just now, in which case you take a hammer and you use the side of the face because that way it cuts better. And you kind of line up your shot and you just go. And it breaks in a different place. And that's the beauty of it, really, because then you get to have randomness in your life. Or if you want to, you can take a glass cutter if you need a specific shape. Like, for example, with this, if I wanted to cut out the rows, I would take a glass cutter, like this one, little wheel, and run it across the part that I don't want. And there's that funny little searing sound. And then just take some pliers and break it off, like that. And then you, you eventually get a nice little round piece like this. You, you just keep working at it, OK? So that's working with tile. Now, you might also have some old plates of grannies that you can't really use because it's just not your style, really. Now, this is actually china, so it's a little bit different. I can just smash it with a hammer, but it tends to crumble. So you get yourself a pair of nippers, huh? little nippers, and you just chew the plate like that. So if I wanted to get that rose out, that or that tulipy thing, I just nip around it like this. Is that easy? I mean, that's romantic exactly is what that is. OK, there's my, my piece. Or I could also, if you have, um, if Granny hasn't handed you her old plates because she knows what you'll do with them, then you just got, kind of get some ironstone stuff um, from the Goodwill or whatever. That's a little bit trickier, because look, it's harder to nip them. And they break in stranger places. So it's a little bit less predictable. The better stuff to work with is the crumbly older stuff. But you get the idea. Like, I'm not that strong, and this is going OK. Now, the only thing is, these edges of the tiles and also the plates are really sharp. So you've got to break them down a little bit. These pliers, you can probably use any old pliers you have around, but these happen to be grosing pliers that you get at a stained glass shop. And they just break down the edge by taking off the very, very sharp bit, like that. OK? And that's good, because when you finish your grouting, which is the part where you fill in all the little spaces, the actual little sharp edges sometimes come up above the surface, and you kind of want to have them soft in case you run your hand across it and you don't want to cut yourself, OK? So that's it. What you do then is make piles and piles and piles. Break up all the plates you can and make piles and of piles of shards. And then you start to do your mosaic. Because what I did was I broke every single individual piece to fit. Well, it just took forever. So it's better to go from a giant pile of stuff. So I'm just going to break up a whole bunch of them. <laughs> and um, loud music is sometimes good, too, because you can like really groove, OK? You can get into a real rhythm. William Blake said that exuberance is beauty. It would have been fun to date William Blake instead of that one boyfriend of mine who kept saying, you're beautiful when you're quiet. Well, being quiet is hard, so it can take a long time to find the right guy. La, la, la. And look, I found marble. I found some old marble, like this pink marble. Isn't that pretty? It's a little harder to break up with the nippers. Once you have your design starting to get figured out, you're going to want to select a shape to, to put them onto, a shelf. Now, you could use an old shelf that you have, or you could buy a ready-made shelf, or you could make your own shelf, which I think is the most interesting thing to do, because then you can cut it any shape you want. 
for example, just uh, put a nail on a string and then attach a pencil to it and go zzzz, and that gives you a half circle, a little geometry there. I excel at geometry. And then, then you want it uh, support so that the thing can hang against the wall without rocking. And you can cut it in a decorative shape like this if you want to, or you can just cut a simple triangle if you want to, but you know, it's kind of up to you. You can get really quite creative there. And you put it in the center like this. Glue that baby, okay? And then to make sure that it's not going anywhere, put it on the side like this and just put three screws into it. If you're using plywood, you'll probably have to pre-drill because the plywood tends to want to reject the drill bit, so it's a good idea. And then you end up with something that looks like this with the screws already in it. And you have to seal it with some kind of water-based urethane, otherwise the plywood absorbs water and it gets all swollen. And we don't want that. Okay, so now that you have your shape, you can start to lay the pieces out. Now, it's best to start on the bottom, do the whole bottom, then finish once you have some practice with the top bit and all the edging. So you just lay them out and you start playing with the, the way. I, I like the bottom, because nobody's ever going to see it, I like the bottom to be just white bits or just one color, and then put the fancier stuff where it shows. Um, and then you'll have to be thinking about mortar. Now, what you use when you're laying tile on a bathroom floor or whatever is called thin set, and it's a fast-acting mortar that sets up pretty quickly. You could also epoxy these babies onto the wood, directly onto the wood, and then grow it around them. If you have different tiles of different thicknesses, like look at these two, for example, you want to be able to build up the mortar underneath it so that they're at the same level. So that's why mortar works better than epoxy, if you've got a lot of different materials. And um, the mortars come in bags, and they're in the tile section, and there are hundreds of them. So here's the deal. Go for white mortar. That's all you need to know. Uh, white thin set is also what it's called. It looks a bit like this. And um, it, there are gray mortars too, but they're so dark that they tend to show through the grout lines and it just makes your whole project look kind of tacky. So try to get white mortar. And you just mix it up in a, in a bucket and you're gonna wanna wear, if you're um, smart, you'll be wearing some gloves because this mortar stuff is very alkaline and it burns into your skin if you get it on you. It's a sort of slow burn where you just have hangnails for weeks, so you just, you just don't want to deal with that. All right, and look on your mortar bag. It will either have polymerized, it will be polymerized, or you will have to add some admixture, which is this stuff in a big bucket. It's white stuff. Looks like milk. So my, my mortar can be mixed with water or this stuff. So just go like that. And then I'm going to use my special mixing tool because I had an old mix master that nobody uses, so I borrowed it. I borrowed it. It's good to clean it possibly before taking it back to the kitchen. Yeah, this is good. Stiff peak stage, people. Want the stiff peak stage, kind of like meringue. All right, so, mmm, yeah, that's, that's good. If it's too runny, it just glorps out all over everything and it just makes a big mess. So, here, I'll show you. I don't want to be licking that, so I'll just set that aside. It's tempting, though, isn't it? Um, so, for the thicker pieces of tile, like this piece of marble here, you just put a little bit on the back, like that and try to keep it in the center and then just plop it down. For the skinny pieces, you want to have a bit more piled up on the back, but not so much that it's going to all creep out and, here, I'll show you. You want to just put it there so it's at the same level. Now, the first time I did this, I had thin set everywhere. It was all, it was popping up all between the cracks and everything. Avoid that because you have to clean it up later when it's hard because the grout needs somewhere to go. So try to keep these little channels between the tiles nice and open. Okay, here's another thick one so it doesn't need much of this stuff. There. Okay. And then maybe this color right there. See, this is fun. 
So I'm going to take this a little farther and then I'm going to have to try working on this vertical surface and that tends to get a little tricky. So I'll get the whole horizontal thing done first and then move up. Okay, I can't stand these another minute. I'm starting to perspire, really. <laughs> Okay, talking to yourself is de rigueur at this point because you're coaching yourself, really. This is tricky, okay? I have to say, I, there's a bunch of ways to do this. You can do the, ver the horizontal surface and then wait till it all sets up. That takes 24 hours. Then you can come back and flip this on its side and do this as a horizontal surface. But I'm going for vertical because they do this in bathrooms. So how hard can it be? But it's actually very, very tricky because if you don't um, put these little spacers in, to, here, look at the other side, they all want to fall, fall down into a little pile at the bottom. So you have to like work your way up and the tiles want to slide down and it's all very tricky and I'll show you what I mean. So I've got the two, these two thick ones, it's better to use the thick ones at the bottom because if you put a little skinny tile here, it just can't support the edges of the next tile up. So this will be our first um, spacer challenge. So it goes like that. And then these are the spacers that I'm talking about. They're plastic, so they don't stick when you try to pull them out later. If you use wood like popsicle sticks or match sticks, then they eventually see it's slipping. So you can use match sticks or popsicle sticks too, but you might want to put some petroleum jelly on the ends of them because they, they tend to not come out. <laughs> you have big embedded chunks of wood in your work. Come on, honey. Okay, so that's good. So then I'll choose another piece and just keep working up the wall, but you'll, you'll be, you know, irritated quite a bit because it really does start to get annoying when you get especially up to the top parts. Expecting not to be irritated when you're building something is certain folly. You have to welcome irritation as a normal part of every project. After all, the more irritated you get, the better the beer is going to taste when you're done. That's the sound of hard epoxy. It's hard on the palette that I mixed it on, so I know it's hard under the little tiles that I fixed. See, this one was really slipping around, so I just taped it. So that's on there now, and so is this one. Okay, ah! So now I'm gonna mix up the grout. So there's two things to know about grout, because there are two kinds of grout. One kind of grout is called sanded grout. It's got sand in it. So it fills bigger spaces. Unsanded grout is powdery and it's very fine and it flows into tiny spaces. You can use the powdery stuff, but for me, I got big spaces. I'm gonna use sanded grout. I chose snow white as my color and you want the rubber gloves on because of course, you, you know, it just, it just gives you dry hands really and nature does that soon enough anyway. So um, I'm gonna add water to this. <coughs> And try not to get it too wet, <laughs> like that's ever happened. And I'm not even going to use my special mixing tool this time. I'm going to go with a lot more moderation, just a trowel. And I'm just going to mix it by hand because I don't have a huge amount here. It would be a bit silly to use the big mixer. Mmm. Okay, it's not quite wet enough. And again, with the texture that you want with the grout is kind of like uh, cookie batter. It's got to be wet enough to flow into the cracks, and uh, but dry enough to not take two days to cure. <laughs> so that's about right. Okay, so I'm going to prop the the tray up on these buckets so I can work on the horizontal surface. Hoping not to knock my little tiles there. All right, so you just take a glob of the grout and plop it down somewhere in the middle. And then you get a rubber float 
these are cheap little things. They've got a layer of hard rubber on the surface and then a layer of softer rubber. Plus they got two pointy ends and two smooth ends. So I'm going to be using the smooth ends because I don't want to catch. I don't, and I'll, I'll, well, I'll show you, I'll just show you. Okay, so I'm going to take this and press down because I'm forcing the grout into the spaces and then drag it. Something else just fell off. <laughs> I broke something else. Just forcing it down and dragging it across in all sorts of different directions because there's so many directions to fill until it's all disappeared. And then you have to add another um, trowel full. So, oops. See, that edge I just caught with my rubber float is because I must have not taken the sharp edge off very well. So another bunch of this stuff. Okay, oh, that was a bit dry at the bottom of the bucket here. I'll just um, mix up a little bit more. I, I think you get too much or you're not getting enough, huh? Isn't it always the way? So I'll just mix up a bit more grout. Life is like a permanent ride on a swinging pendulum. You keep expecting to stop at a nice cozy spot and just hang out there, but that pendulum never rests. So the best you can do, like your mom always said, is try to have a pleasant facial expression. Okay, so the grout has started to set up, which is good. It's been about 15 minutes or so. It'll vary depending on how wet you mixed the grout. Then you need a tiling sponge. It's got all soft corners on it, except I cut the end off mine to make some smaller sponges, so it's a bit sharp. So I won't, I won't use that edge. And what you want to do is, in a diagonal manner, just wipe the sponge across. You try not to disturb the grout too much, and then go in a different direction. You're just softening it, then you, then you rinse it out. The reason you keep rinsing it is because you're gonna, you, you, ha you have to remove the grout from the surface of the tiles. And if you leave even streaks of it, that stuff hardens on and it never comes off. You'll have foggy tile, foggy china, foggy everything. So you want a really nice clean surface. You just have to keep wiping it. Also, this little bit at the front, I had to use my fingers to press the stuff in with. So when it comes to um, wiping that down, I'll just use a little wee sponge. <laughs> okay, so it's down to the final wiping. And if you're not slimed by now, you're not having enough fun. So the very last bucket of water, you need it to be really fresh, clean water. I've done five wipe downs now, allowing about 10 minutes between each one. You don't want to tear the grout out, so you have to let it dry to a certain extent. Totally clean sponge surface each time, or you'll leave a film on it and it'll never come off. So once that, it's going to take me a bit longer to clean that up, but I want to show you how to hang this and also how to seal it. Um, the two little screws need to be drilled Otherwise, they push the wood apart and they might crack your masonry. Um, take a bead of tub and tile caulking, the silicone stuff, and just run it all around the edge like that so you don't get leaks and the wood doesn't swell and the whole thing turns to heck. And the other thing is that once the grout is cured, which is usually three to six days, you need to take some sealer, some grout sealer, and actually brush it on all over the whole thing. And that seals the tiles forever. And that should make the whole darn thing completely waterproof. See, it goes on really easily. OK? And then just wipe it off afterwards. OK, so that's sealed. So s clearly, mosaic is a lot of fun. And you know, just make sure that if you get any on you, you actually get it off right away, because it really wrecks clothes. Um, there are a lot of artisans working in Mosaic, and one of them is Laura Jolicoeur, and she's in Nova Scotia. She is great. She does all her own tiles. She paints them herself. She breaks them up and puts them into mosaics. This is a sort of a church window format. But see how she's painted all these people? That's a guy. And um, really fine work, very sophisticated. And uh, Glenn Robinson is another guy who's working, an artisan who's working in ceramic and doing mosaic. This is a bowl that he made. 
it's really pretty. And he's stuck in pieces of mirror, especially on the bottom, which I like. And then he also made this mirror. He likes working with found objects, so he made this mirror. This is a handle of a spoon. Cool, eh? And this is cool. He just left the little Made in England sign on the back. Pretty. Oh. Anyway, you're really going to like mosaic. It was Maltby D. Babcock who said that our business in life is not to get ahead of other people, but to get ahead of ourselves. And he was right, especially when you're making something, because your own limitations force you to get ahead of yourself, because if you don't, you end up being beside yourself, and one of you is going to be in a bad mood. 